This is David Hogan with Herald News Media Services. We're at Moody City Hall, Moody, Alabama. I have Nate Custer on my right. I have Carl Sherrill on my left. They'd like to talk to you about FEMA and SBA. Mr. Custer, tell us what people can expect coming here. They can expect a lot of help in a, in a, in a short period of time from FEMA, but they have to register first to get that. They have to call 1-800-621-FEMA or go online at disasterassistance.gov and in, in a matter of about 15 minutes explain what damage they had, whether they have an insurance coverage, give their social security number, the address where the damage occurred, a means of being contacted because a lot of people have had to move out and live with family or friends and so they need to be contacted so FEMA can get, get back in touch with them and uh, consider some help for them. This is designed to get people back on their feet. It's not going to make you whole again to where you were before these Alabama tornadoes occurred but it's to if your home is such that it can be repaired uh, they can provide funds for home home repairs, funds for rental housing assistance and, and there are other needs. Also it it's a very much a partnership that we have. FEMA is not here, to, so to speak, to run the show. We are here to work with our state and local partners, the nonprofit organizations, the voluntary organizations, the faith-based organizations, the private sector, in trying to get people uh, back on their feet and, and push along this long, long recovery effort that we face. Now, Mr. Custer, you've got a full staff here. Uh, there's people in the room here at Moody City Hall, uh, but this is not just for the citizens of Moody, it's for the St. Clair area, is that correct? That is, that's correct, David. Uh, anybody who lives in one of the actually 42 counties in Alabama that have been declared for individual assistance can come to this recovery center if it happens to be more convenient for them. They may be here from another county because they're here living with family or friends because back in their home county they don't have a home they can live in. So this is a facility that if you would like to come and talk to someone face to face, you've got FEMA, you've got the Small Business Administration, you've got the Social Security Administration here, you've got other agencies, uh, the state sometimes will be at these centers. You do not have to come here. You do have to register by calling 1-800-621-FEMA or going online at disasterassistance.gov. Now do they need to register before they come to this facility? We would like for them to do that, but some people may not have access to a phone. There are uh, phones here that they can register here, but it, it'll be a little uh, speedier process when they come here to talk to someone face-to-face -face if they have already filed their information. When they sit down at one of the tables behind me, they will talk with a FEMA person who will call up their registration file. They'll be given, uh, when they register, a nine-digit uh, nine number, and then the person can look and make sure the information is complete, see if there's anything missing, answer their questions see what the situation is of possible FEMA assistance versus what insurance they may have. All right, now we're going to get right back to you. Let me turn just for a moment. Uh, this is Mr. Sherrill with the SBA. Now, Mr. Sherrill, a lot of people, they immediately think of the Small Business Administration. That's who you are. Uh, but you can also help individuals here. Could you kind of explain what you can do here for people? Yes, David. Uh, I want to make it uh, clear that uh, while it does say small business, uh, do not fool, be fooled by that because in disasters like this in Alabama, uh, uh, basically we can offer assistance to anyone that was affected and by anyone I want to include uh, individuals that may have been affected here in Alabama renters homeowners businesses of all sizes and nonprofit organizations as Nate told you the first step is to register with FEMA uh, complete that registration either online or over the phone then if you receive a SBA application uh, after you after registering with FEMA we want you to fill that out and get it back to us just as soon as possible uh, that application is not your tax return uh, whoever pays the bills in your household should be able to fill that out in about 15 minutes and get it back to us the reason that's so important is that's your gateway to possible further assistance so if you don't fill that out you may not receive 
all of the assistance that's available to you. All right, so you're actually helping individuals, but are you also helping businesses, are, and what can you do for them? We are also helping businesses as well. Uh, for both uh, individuals and businesses, uh, our assistance is in the form of long-term low-interest loans uh, directly from the U.S. Treasury. Most people think of SBA as helping small businesses uh, start, expand, and uh, the regular SBA works through the local banks, whereas these funds come directly from the U.S. Treasury uh, to help people with their long-term recovery. One of the other points I'd like to make to people is that your insurance does not have to be settled uh, before you complete that application or before we can help you uh, because you could, we could go ahead and possibly get you some funds to begin your recovery uh, and then just take an assignment of insurance proceeds so that those pay off the loan when your insurance does settle. So the first step, that they've got to make the contact, register, and even if they're scared to register, they need to go ahead and do that, that they may find they're eligible for something they're not aware of. That's right. Uh, and a uh, typical thing that we run into, we've already heard here in Alabama is, uh, well, I didn't have as much damage as my neighbor who was completely destroyed, so I don't want to take money away from them by uh, going through this registration process. If you were affected at all, uh, this is a taxpayer-based program, and we've all, as your congressman uh, said last week, we've all been taxpayers for a long time. So we want everyone that was affected here in Alabama to take advantage of both the FEMA resources and the SBA resources to help you uh, get on your way to recovery just as fast as possible. We have already, um, on the SBA side, we've already approved loans for people in Alabama to begin their recovery. Uh, we are approving loans every day, so we want you to get that application back to us just as soon as possible. All right, thank you very much. We want to let the people know that this is at Moody City Hall. You'll see the big FEMA trailer out front. Uh, remember, the exit 144, Moody exit. Then you continue down Moody Parkway. You will turn right from the freeway. You'll see the signs. Uh, it's very easy to find, or you can call Moody City Hall, or call the Moody or Leeds Herald. We'll help you get there. And let me turn back to you. What are the hours you're actually here? Here. This facility is open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week until further notice as are all of these recovery centers that are well over two dozen of them that are now open uh, in northern Alabama. Are you starting to get some people trickle in? I mean I know a lot of people were waiting to hear when you would get here. Well you're here now and we're glad to see you. Well we've actually been here within a matter of a day or two after this happened. Uh, it's just a little bit of an organizational process to get these open but we will be here uh, for an indefinite period of time and it is some uh, it is a place where people can come and talk to someone face to face about their application. As I said before they do not have to come to a recovery center but you must register with FEMA and that opens the door to possible help from not only FEMA but from the SBA. We'd also like to ask uh, what are some of the things that are covered by FEMA that people can, I, I mean I realize it's a case-by-case -case basis but what kind of light can you shed on that? Uh, assistance with rental housing. If, they, if they, their home is, is no longer there or is damaged to the extent that they cannot live in it, uh, FEMA can, can consider them for help with, with having to rent some temporary location. Home repairs. If the home is such that it can be repaired, uh, without a, a major uh, project involved, uh, a little bit of patching here and there and, and uh, whatever, uh, they can uh, possibly receive assistance from FEMA for that. And if they uh, must fill out the SBA application to keep their options open, uh, if, they are, if, if they are not able to secure the SBA loan, uh, because of their maybe their financial situation, their uh, inability to repay a loan, then they are turned back to FEMA for what we call other needs assistance, and that can include that can include things like tools that someone has lost for their work, the child's uh, home computer, uh, uh, a variety a variety of things. Again, it, it is on a case by case basis. I want to make one thing clear though. There's been a conception that FEMA is going to pay for people uh, to buy or rent generators. That is not the case. We do 
covered generators, but only if there's a medical situation where the electricity has to be uh, maintained for, for life support. Uh, other than that, we, uh, we we do not reimburse for generators. We have to watch out also, David, for for scam artists. There's sure. been one case of someone coming in here from out of state with a truckload of non-branded generators made somewhere overseas, and this individual was telling people, well, buy one of these generators, keep your receipt, and FEMA will reimburse you, and that's not the case. And our local FBI contacted us for just what you spoke about with various scam artists. That's so unfortunate that people do that. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, what about businesses or people? We all know the housing economy the entire country's in. What about if someone has a rental property uh, for rent or something, should they contact FEMA or is that just not something you can get involved with? Uh, they should contact their local uh, local officials, uh, their social services, human re human resources, uh, whatever. Make that known, contact their emergency manager and he can pass that information up, up the line. We're working with a number of agencies and the state government, uh, the, part, the Department of Housing and Urban Development and, and some of the uh, other agencies on a housing task force looking at these, uh, at these housing needs. We don't have any real firm answers on, on specifics on that, but we've already brought into a couple of the hardest hit areas some of the FEMA mobile homes that, that can be put down on a mobile home park where there is not an issue of having to hook up utilities and, and where the building, uh, the, the local permits can be uh, complied with. So that has happened out in the Hackleburg, uh, Phil Campbell area and a little bit south of there in Hamilton out in Marion County. These are mobile homes. These are not travel trailers. We do not use travel trailers anymore. These are three-bedroom mobile homes. I'm not saying this is going to be widespread or it's not going to be widespread. It's being looked at as an option. The, uh, the preferred method of helping people with housing remains putting them in a rental facility. Okay, uh, as we wind up, uh, Mr. Sherrill, I'd like to ask you as we close, uh, you've now had an opportunity to inspect the area, to, to move around a little bit. Um, this is pretty devastating, isn't it? It is pretty devastating. And one of the things I'd like to mention is that uh, one of the uh, forms of assistance that we have for businesses are, is for, uh, there are some businesses in the area I know that may not have been affected physically but as a result of the disaster, they have uh, either lost business or their costs have increased. Uh, so they have what we term economic injury. And we consider loaning businesses in that situation, operating funds until things can return to normal, uh, until they, to keep them in business, basically, until they can get back on their feet. Okay, very good. We want to thank both you gentlemen for being with us. And this is David Hogan signing off for Herald News Media.